you was a bit, well, not really caring about how you packed it. You get into the plane, you fly into the air, and then you jump out of the plane with your parachute. It doesn't open properly, and you go to your death. <coughs> Excuse me. That is what we're like with our heart. We do not guard our hearts properly. We're careless, just like packing that parachute. We're careless. We're careless in guarding our heart. Lot's wife was careless in guarding her heart. Proverbs 4, verse 23, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Hebrews 13, 12, take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. If we doubt, if we have bitterness, if we have false teaching, if we allow false ideas to get into our hearts, they will make us loop back to the sins of the world rather than to God. Number two, Lot's wife did not treasure the things of God. When I was a young boy of about five years of age, I remember I used to get pocket money given to me by my grandma and granddad. And I used to put the pocket money under a, a, a rug in my grandma and granddad's house. I did it because the pocket money meant a lot to me and it was a treasure that I would keep and keep safe. Lot's wife did not treasure the things of God. She looked back and therefore turned to salt. Matthew 6, 20 says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Number three. Lot's wife clearly disobeyed God. Now, in the law of the land, it tells us not to murder. But imagine if I murdered someone or you murdered someone and we just thought, oh, it's no big deal. The, the, the police won't do anything. We wouldn't have that attitude to the law, would we? We would know that if we murdered, we would get caught and that we would be sent to prison. But we often sin against God and excuse it by saying, oh, it's no big deal. But to God, it is a big deal. Genesis nineteen seventeen, And it came to pass when they had brought them forth abroad that he said, Escape for, for the life, look not behind thee, neither stay thou in all the plain. Escape to the mountain, lest thou be consumed. She turned to salt. A lot turned, Lot's wife turned to salt when she looked back. But do you notice something? She trampled on the commands of God. God said, don't look back, and she looked back. And therefore she turned to salt. Romans 11.22 says, Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God, on them which fell severity, but towards thee goodness, if thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall Sorry, behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God. We can't cheapen sin. We can't play around with sin. God is a great God. And there is consequences to disobedience. 1 Corinthians 15, 2 says, By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preach to you. Otherwise you are believed in vain. My friend, let's not play around with sin. Let's be careful with what we watch, what we see, what we do. Because God, even small sins, doesn't like it. Number four, Lot's wife looked back rather than go forward. You know, there are, in America and in the UK, that, and there are enactment societies, like in America, there's an enactment society for the American Civil War where people dress up as soldiers of, of, of the American Civil War. And they'll spend a lot of money buying the, the armor, buying the, the uniforms, and they live in that time. But it's not the real time. It, the time has gone, but they're living the past. Many of us are living in the past. 
the past of, of 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 past regrets where we've done things and we regret the past for what we've done many live in the past because of memories we've lost a loved one and we live in the past my friend it's time to stop living in the past it's time you move forward if you keep living in the past, you're living in death, you're living in no life. God has called you to live today. You have a life to live today. You have hope for today. You have joy for today. Stop living in the past. Stop dragging up your mistakes. Stop dragging up the pain. Stop dragging up the bad memories or, or the memories of the past. Stop it now. No, don't go back to the past. You've got to go forward. Yes, you've got a future. Yes, you've got a hope. You can do it oh god is with you god has a plan god has a purpose for you oh please don't go back to the past it's but it's but death for you it, it's not what god wants for you you keep living in it you keep running around and and running in your mind the pain of the past the pain of the past the pain of the past and it's not good for you you keep looking around in your mind for 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 memories of the past and and it's not good for you because you're living in the past but god wants you to live today and if you live in the past you'll turn to salt so don't do it anymore go forward god has a future for you brethren says paul i count it not myself to apprehend it but this one thing i do forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth with the things which are before Philippians 3 13 and Jesus said unto him no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God Luke 9 62 Lot's wife had her heart captured by the spirit of the age she did not guard her heart. She did not guard her heart. She did not treasure the things of God. She trampled under the foot God's commands and she kept looking back rather than forward. Our Lord in Luke 17 verse 32 said, remember Lot's wife. In 1 Corinthians 10 6 it says, now these things were our example to the interest we should not lust after evil things as they also trusted let us turn to colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 16. colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 16. colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 16. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. Where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ who is our life shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication and cleanliness, inordinate affection evil conspicuous and covetousness which is idolatry <coughs> for which things sake the wrath of god come on the children of disobedience in the which you also walked some time when you lived in them but now you also put off all things anger malice and blasphemy filthy communication out of your mouth let no one let not one to another seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him where there is neither greek nor jew circumcision nor uncircumcision barbarian or Scythian, bond or free but christ is in all and in all put on therefore as the elect of god holy and beloved bowels of mercy and kindness humbleness of mind meekness and long suffering forbearing one another and forgiving one another if any man have a quarrel against any even as christ forgave you so also do you and above all these things put on charity which is the bond of perfectness and let the peace of god rule in your hearts to the to to, to the which you also are called in one body and be ye thankful and let the word of christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms hymns and spiritual songs singing with grace in your hearts to the lord 
You need to focus your mind on Christ. Focus your mind on the things of God and don't look back anymore. You go forward now because God is with you and it's going to be a good year, a blessed year. If God is going to bless you abundantly. He's, he's got so much for you, my friend. He's got so much blessing for you. It's coming into your life. All the joy, the blessing, the peace and all the blessings for you. But you have to look forward rather than backwards. You have to go forward in obedience rather than backwards in disobedience. It's time you're transformed the renewing of your mind and focus on the things of God. Let's pray for you today. Let us pray. Father God, we praise you and we give you the glory and we magnify your name. We magnify you, O God. We praise you, O God. We worship you, O God. We give you the glory, O God. We praise you as our God today. We thank you that you are our God today, that you never fail us, that you never leave us, that you are with us today. And so, God, we praise you. We worship you. We honor you. We magnify your name that you are with us today. You go before us today. Father, I pray for my brothers and sisters today who have heard your word today, that you would bless them, that you would encourage them, that you would strengthen them, that you, Father, would renew them in all things. Be with them, Father, in the name of Jesus. And may this year be a blessed year for them. May this year be a year where they look forward rather than backward. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for listening. I hope that's been a blessing to you. Uh, please uh, remember my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. jasonburnspreacher.com. Lots of ministry there for you to be blessed in. And may God bless you. And thank you for listening to this sermon. And thank you for your support and your prayers. And may God bless you uh, today in, in all that you do and your family. God bless you. And take care. God bless.